All right. So it is September 10th, 2024 at 11.57 p.m. Tomorrow is September the 11th. And I am recording this right now because today is the day one year ago that I got five signs from God that I needed to quit my job. And then the next day, which is going to be tomorrow, September 11th, was the last day I worked the job I had, which was being a server at a restaurant. And I felt like doing this, and I've been thinking about this day for a while now, and I've been thinking about making this video really just as a documentation and a testimony to the past year that I've had to commemorate the insane, arduous, suffering adventure that I've been on for not only the last couple years of my life, but for the last 34, 35 years of my life. My birthday is coming up in November. I'll be 35 this year. And so in this video, I want to talk about two things. The first thing I want to talk about is what I've learned since running a business. Uh, technically, you could say my music career over the past 20 years has been a business, but um, what I'm doing now is an official business where I'm actually offering a service that's helping other people. Uh, not that music isn't that, but um, this is definitely something else. And it is what I feel like my true calling was always meant to be. Uh, so I want to kind of just break down all the things that I learned almost just as a documentation to my future self. Um, and for anyone else who will watch this, who is trying to start a business or who wants to start a business. Uh, and then the other thing I want to talk about is after speaking to probably north of 200 artists at this point over the past year and working with about 40, um, what are the most common things and threads that really are just the struggles that musicians face nowadays. Um, and hopefully this will shed a light to anyone out there that is trying to make a career out of music. Um, and so I have some other videos that go over this, but just to kind of paint the story, let me turn my... Okay, set this up pretty quick. Um, camera there, camera there. Hopefully everything looks good. Wow, okay, so here we go. It is now 12 a.m. on September 11th, 2024. And so just as a quick precursor to what I wanna go into and what I wanna talk about, um, the signs that I kinda got from God that day that I needed to quit my job, um, and without going too down the rabbit hole of the story that leads me up to quitting my job, basically after my 20 years of music, uh, hit a really low point where everything that kind of happened with me, um, really made me end up losing my entire love for music. Um, and that's why I eventually went back to working a job as a server. Um, and that is what initially inspired me to start the company that I I have today, which is coaching for artists from an artist perspective and really to help Zach five, 10 years ago. Like what would I do for myself? What would I tell myself if I could go back in time? What mistakes would I try to help myself avoid? Um, and so my entire story leading up to now um, has been really this big setup for this incredible thing that's been created um, since. And so, um, while I was back working my job, um, I kind of started a couple different business ideas. And then when I finally landed on this, like coaching consulting for artists, um, there was a couple things that happened. I met someone who became my, my first kind of life business coach. Um, and then as things were kind of ramping up and I was about to take some time off of work to go to this event, um, on September 10th, I 
was at work. The first kind of sign was a manager that I had was talking to a bartender. He was telling him that um, he knew this girl who did real estate, who was a bartender, and she just like made the leap. And then he was like, and now she's just killing it. And I didn't really say anything, but I was like, huh, okay, cool. Um, and then I was looking at my phone um, at work, like um, the best employee I was. Um, and Alex Ramosi has been a entrepreneur. I've just been following for a very long time. Uh, and I've been listening to him a lot, even before I quit my job. Uh, and I remember something that he said was like, don't quit your job until you have like half of your income from your business or something like that. But there was a video, um, that was kind of a little bit different than that. It was kind of saying that people are not fully committing to their business because they have like a crutch or they're hanging on to something or they have like a plan B. And so it was kind of a diversion from what I was used to seeing. And so that kind of struck me as kind of odd. And so that was kind of sign number two. Uh, and then when I got off work, I was just kind of already feeling a certain way. And um, I just had a lot of kind of personal things that were going on in my life as well. So there was a lot, a lot of emotions, a lot of different things, relationship, friendship wise that were going on at the time. So um, as most men do after work, when they are kind of struggling or just feeling numb uh, about life um, and, and all the things that we have to do as men. Uh, I was just sitting in my truck and I was scrolling my phone uh, and I passed a video and it basically said something along the lines of the one move or decision that you're scared to make is the one decision that can change everything. Uh, and so at that moment in my car, I put my hands up and I said, God, I hear you. But if you're telling me what I think you're telling me right now, I need you to confirm this to me. Because in my mind, I was not ready financially or even confidently enough to, to make that leap at that moment. I'd really made pretty much zero money from the business. Um, and then as I was getting ready for bed um, towards the time it is now, probably around 11, 12 o'clock, um, I realized that the next day was 9-11 or September 11th. Uh, and without getting super down the rabbit hole on this, um, I've just seen that number for a very long time. Um, as someone who is uh, a person of faith, there's been some, um, some talks about that that may be Jesus' birthday instead of uh, Christmas. But uh, regardless of the exact meaning that anyone else wants to put to it, the meaning that it has um, been to me through the years. Uh, first, I thought it was really weird, obviously, with 9-11 happening when I was a kid in seventh grade, uh, and then just our emergency number in America being 9-11. Um, it's a very seemingly negative number. Um, and I don't know why, but it's just kind of followed me um, since then. Uh, and I thought it was really weird, but I eventually kind of realized it was like this little checkpoint and, and it was kind of like this, this hand on my back from God of like, Hey man, you're on the right path. You're doing the right things. Um, cause I would see it in just like kind of pivotal moments. And some of them were really like moments that were tough. And some of them were moments of like confirmation. Um, and if there's any pattern in my life that has been consistent, it's been that. Um, which is really crazy. And I know people see like 1111 and different angel numbers and stuff like that. And I'm not really, I don't really subscribe to that. Uh, I think there's kind of like a lot of new age stuff in there that I don't really subscribe to anymore in my life. Um, but this has been one number consistently. And so I say all that to say that the final confirmation of, well, I guess it would be the fourth sign was tomorrow's that day. Like, of course it would be today, right? Um, and then... Once it turned 12 a.m. on September 11th, um, I have the Bible app on my phone and the um, little picture and verse changed from whatever it was. And I think even that day it was the verse about don't be anxious, don't worry about anything, which is interesting too. So I guess that could be maybe the sixth sign. Um, but the Bible verse switched from that verse to Isaiah 41.13, which basically says, don't be scared, uh, I'm here to help you. And the picture literally had a hand reaching out. Um, and I get chills kind of thinking about this. Um, 
And so that was really the final confirmation to me. And then the next day uh, I went in, didn't get my two weeks or anything. I was already going to have time off anyway. And, and, uh, I quit. Um, and the next day I actually signed my first two artists to work with, uh, for my business. Um, and you know, just as a preface for this entire kind of story, uh, and kind of stuff that I want to, um, to get into with the business. Um, I take credit for trying as hard as I have been and did. Um, but there is a quote and it says, work like your life depends on it, but pray like it depends on God. And so through so many things that happened to me, um, there were just so many moments where if, if I didn't start working with someone or money didn't come in, like it was over. Right. And, and those are those moments where, you know, it's not me. And I knew, and I knew in my heart that it wasn't me. The only thing that I can take credit for is I was obedient to listen to the signs and actually just take action. Um, and really continually lean in prayer and, and, and lean on God and my relationship with him. But um, I really give all the glory to him for every single thing that's happened to me, for every single person that I've been able to help, for every single person that's come into my life to help me. Um, it is undescribably unbelievable how many things have lined up for me this year for me to be able to say what I'm about to about uh, where I am. Um, and so before I kind of get into um, all the kind of lessons and things that, that I kind of learned from this, um, in my first year of running a business, um, I was able to pass six figures in revenue. Uh, and I know that number is a very kind of crazy number to be able to, be able to say in your first year as a business. Um, and I think it's a combination of a lot of things. I think it's a combination of um, obviously just the obedience to God and the business being something that's so near and dear to my heart. I care about it so deeply. Um, and so maybe that is kind of the first lesson I want to talk about is if you decide to start a business, I would highly recommend that it be something that you deeply care about, something that is already kind of a part of your nature, something that you would already want to do anyways. And for me, because music has been my entire life, that's the only thing I ever focused on my entire life, I understand so deeply what it's like to be an artist. And so once I had 20 years of experience and I eventually lost my love for it and I understood what went wrong, I understand what I should have been doing, um, my perspective on how I could help someone else was so not only understood, but it was, it just embodied exactly who I was and what I went through. It was like, it was exactly my story. And the business was really like something that I would have wished existed that didn't. And I feel like the best inventions in time, whether it was a caveman getting tired of sitting on a rock and he eventually made a chair, the best inventions are something that you see that doesn't exist. And I feel like those people um, that feel that certain way, it is our duty in a way to, to bring that thing to life. Um, and, and that's what I truly feel happened with the situation. Um, but again, it was not my plan. This was for sure God's plan for my life. I never in a million years thought I would ever be a uh, coach for artists or have a business. I always thought my career would just blow up and turn into this huge thing and that would just be my life. Um, and there are still parts of me that want that, right? But what I'm doing now, honestly, is way more fulfilling than music ever uh, made me feel. And so the first lesson is if you're going to start a business, it needs to be something that you deeply care about. Because if it's not something that you deeply care about, that you very much understand, um, it will be way too hard because it is so hard. Uh, and, and when you talk about trying to sell the business or build the business or build a team or get people to work with you or just what 
uh, gets you through those nights and those days when you have no idea where the money's going to come from. If it is not something that you deeply care about, um, it will probably not work out. Um, yeah. And so that, that is my first thing that I learned is the business needs to be something you deeply care about. Um, and so for me, the last thing I'll say about that is, um, I've always been a caring person. So besides my experience in music, like I love helping people. I love trying to encourage people. I love trying to, uh, to nurture and motivate, um, people all the time. It's, it's what I do in, in my life. Whenever I meet someone, I always try to ask them like, Hey, you know, yeah, maybe you work this job, but like, what's your dream, man? And so I, I've always been someone that whenever I meet someone new, I always try to like give them some kind of like motivation or something like, um, you know, a question I ask people all the time is if money wasn't a thing, like, what would you do with your life? And so I ask that to people all the time. And so when I, when I ask someone that, um, I usually end up saying like, Hey man, if that's what you really want to do, like, it's worth it. Like you should go after it. Like you should try to make that happen. Um, and so I've always been this kind of caring person and, um, you know, to get kind of deep and maybe a little bit personal about it. Uh, I've never had a brother. My dad wasn't in my life. And so, um, I feel like it's almost been also a part of my story to be that, um, role for other people that I didn't really have. Um, uh, yeah. So I would say the other things with the business are, um, do not hire someone to do a job that they've never done before. Um, with a couple caveats, there's a couple caveats to this. Um, and even just to go to the kind of current situation that I'm in right now, this is very, very cool. Uh, this is like, uh, this situation literally just happened tonight in terms of getting started with this person. So, um, I've been working with, um, a friend's editing team and granted they've been doing a good job, right. But one of my references, um, for how I kind of want my content to be is this, this one dude, um, and his name's Tom Noski. I've actually gone to his cohort and, uh, he's an incredible entrepreneur, an incredible creative and the style of the videos that he does is exactly in a way what I want to do. Um, and so all the, uh, the notes for the other editing team have been, Hey, can you just make it look like this? Can you just make it look like this? Um, <laughs> and so the other day I, I, I liked Tom's videos, but I had no idea who edited his videos. Uh, and the other day this post came up on my, on my feed and I saw it was like a unedited and edited and basically found out that like, this is the editor. Right. And so sent him like the most nice message probably I've ever sent someone. I mean, definitely one of them. Um, and now I'm going to start to work with him. We're going to start our first couple videos. And so, uh, instead of trying to go back and forth with this other team to try to get them to do what this guy is doing, just hire the person who does exactly what you want them to do. And granted, he's far more expensive than what I'm paying now. But I think the lesson with that is the time that it takes to sit with someone and try to teach them something is most likely at the end of the day, not worth it. And you're going to save yourself so much more time and energy and just uh, willpower to try to get someone to do something that is like something else when even though the other person might be more expensive, like it's, it's always going to be the better option. Just go pay for the person who does the thing that you need them to do. Um, or is the person that can actually help you. And I think that that leads me into the third, the third point. Um, and this is so relevant in terms of when we start talking about the music side. So after I quit my job, something happened right at about that moment where I hired a coach. And at the time it was going to be $2,000 a month. And at the time my rent was probably $800 and just quit my job and hadn't made any money with my business. And so Zach, you're going to pay $2,000 a month to this guy to be your life business coach. And that seems kind of crazy. Like, what are you doing? I mean, I had to put it on a loan or a credit card, like literally every time. Okay. But, um, that 
action and that assistance that I had at the beginning. Um, and granted, um, it was really great. The, the, the connections that I made out of that were amazing. But in terms of the like tactical things of like what I needed to do, they didn't really come from that person. But I don't regret that decision at all, which added up to be like eight to $10,000. Because what it did for me was it made me have skin in the game, which was my business and what my, my, um, my motivation to, to do what I was trying to do, especially after the decision to quit my job. Um, and at the time in my perspective, like that was the perfect fit of the guy that I needed to work with. Right. Because it was actually back and forth between another thing that I was about to sign up for. Um, and then after that ended, um, when I was kind of frustrated going through, um, just the first kind of couple months in my business from coaching to doing this masterclass to, um, trying to put this other stuff together. Um, I had met another person who became my second business coach and both of those situations were the exact person that I needed to work with who I knew would take me to that next level. And the price that it, it cost to work with both of them, um, in my mind, didn't matter. It didn't matter at all. I was like, this person is exactly who I need at this moment. And then this person is also exactly who I need at this moment. And both of those times I was just praying to God that the loan, the credit card thing would just go through. And it did both times. Um, but I say that to say, if you know that you need help and you know that there's a person out there that can help you to learn the things and get to where you want to be, it is worth it to do whatever you can to work with them. Whether you have to sell something, borrow money, whatever it is. Because the only way that you can get ahead, the only way that you can get to your goals is to buy someone else's experience. You can choose to try to figure it out by yourself. But here's the kind of lesson that I tell some of the artists that I am on calls with or that I work with. It took me 20 years of music to learn what I did. And so some other artists could, could be like, I'm just going to go through, I'm going to figure it out by myself. But in the time that it took me to figure out what I needed to learn, I didn't even want to do it anymore. And so, yes, you can not spend any money to get help and you could just try to figure it all out yourself, right? But it might take you 20 years. And then you might be like, I'm so burnt down. I don't even want to do this anymore. And so even if working with this, a person is five, 10, 20, 50 grand, but they can, they can compress 20 years of experience into a year. And then most of the time help you make money. Like when I hired my second business coach, I, I 10 X my investment into that. And I would have paid at this point, like, two, three, four, five times the amount of money to still get that education because I wouldn't be where I am now if I didn't make that decision and I didn't put money down to get the help. Because as soon as I did both times, I got the support I needed. I got, I got the, the list. I got the, the ingredients, the recipe of what to do. And then both of those times, I was also connected inside of a group with other people who were trying to do the same thing. And so... That's maybe leads me to the next point is your sphere of influence, your circle of friends, your community is impacting your life probably more than you think. Um, you know, there's a quote where it's like, you know, your, your income's the average of your five best friends or the five people you hang out with most. And that couldn't be more true. And so, you know, at, at the time in my life last year, um, there were just a lot of people around me that were not supporting and encouraging the person that I was trying to be. And so more than just trying to get the help from um, a single person, my actually initial motivation to sign up with some kind of business coach or program was, how can I put myself 
in a room with other people who are way better than me, where I'm the dumbest person in the room. Like if you're in a room and you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Um, and, and I have a lot of like, I guess you could say kind of PTSD with this specific um, subject because um, as grateful I am for the skill and the talent and everything that I've been able to do with music um, in Sacramento where I grew up uh, and in Vegas, um, I was able to get to a certain level locally where a lot of people were looking at me, right? And to me, there just wasn't a lot of competition locally. And I got to a place where everyone was looking up to me and, and, it, and it got kind of annoying one, because I know I had still so much to go, but two, because I didn't feel like I had anyone above me that was like challenging me. And, and, and I'm not trying to say that to sound cocky, but it's just the truth. I just didn't have anyone in the music scene where I was like, dude, they're killing it. Like I need to go hang out with them. Right. And so once I decided to go into business, um, for myself, um, and start this business. Um, I, I knew I was a baby. I knew there were so many things that I didn't know. And so a, a huge part of the investments that I made at the beginning were how can I put myself in rooms with other people who are the same value mindset, Christian, strong male men. How can I put myself in people who understand money, who understand how to run a business, who understand sales, who understand marketing, all these different things and watching YouTube videos and reading books. And that's all great. Um, but you have to connect and surround yourself with other people trying to do the same things so they can help pull you up, right? If you think just rationally about the metaphor for pulling someone up and dragging someone down, if I'm sitting right here and someone's standing next to me, you know, it's so easy to just pull all my weight and drag someone down. And that is what most people do. That is what most people are doing to their friends. That's what most people are doing to the people around them without them even knowing is, um, they're so used to that person that's really not the best version of, of them. And so it's so easy to just like drag that person back down, right? If you were at a table with five super overweight people and they got cake, they're probably going to say, Hey, like have a bite. Come on. It's not that bad. It's just a piece of cake. Right. But it's a lot harder to pull someone up even physically. And unless you're around high quality, positive, encouraging, motivating people, it is going to be so hard to pull yourself up. Um, and some of my best friends and, and even people who work with me now have come from those two situations. My first business coach and my second business coach. What The first business coach, one of my best friends, like one of my brothers came from that. And then um, uh, kind of my right-hand man person on my team now came from my business coach and my second business coach. And if I didn't, not only pay to get the help when I needed it then and get in that group, like those people, I would have never met them. And, and, and so the combination of all these things, which is invest in your education and the support that you need and do whatever you can um, pay for it if you have to, too, to get in rooms with people who are better than you. Um, I'm trying to think of some other things on the business side, but I feel like those are definitely some of the, the biggest. Um, I think the other things are you have to just realize that <laughs> you can have a schedule, um, but as a business owner, you're working all day. Um, and one of the biggest things that I learned, uh, which is from Hermosi, is if it's the constraint of the company, it's your job. Right. So there's a, there a couple of times where this first person I hired wasn't really doing the job that, that I needed them to do. Um, and then I just kind of, it really just hit me because um, through hiring someone who didn't really have experience and then taking my eye off what I needed to do, um, ended up with the revenue that I generated the month before this happened. Um, I technically lost probably if I stayed on track of what I was doing, I technically lost like $50,000. Uh, and so that was a massive lesson at the beginning of do not try to scale too soon. Um, and, you know, one of my favorite entrepreneurs, his name's Dan Martell, but his book, Buy Back Your Time, I kind of read and it kind of made me go, oh, I need an assistant, right? Um, 
But the truth is I didn't need an assistant yet. I needed to just keep doing what I was doing, which was messaging people and doing sales calls with people, right? I didn't need someone to take that role from me yet. And so I think that's really kind of, uh, really is the lesson is at the beginning, you should be doing everything humanly possible to run your business and stay lean until you are literally the constraint, until there's like so much going on that you literally cannot handle it anymore. So you have to hire someone else. Yeah. Um, I guess maybe on the personal side of things um, is – having a business is so incredibly emotional. And especially as someone who communicates all day, I'm talking to artists, I'm working with artists. I kind of have to sometimes separate my, my emotions from the job. And even though I love the job, I have to kind of like walk away from, from calls, from experiences. And, you know, even if someone didn't sign up or what, I have to kind of separate myself from that. But uh, on the flip side of that, when you have a company and there's people who like now I have a team of three people um, and I'm working with there's about 26, 27 artists in my group right now. It doesn't matter how I personally feel. I show up and I give my hundred percent every single time I'm talking to a teammate or I am talking to an artist or I am on the group call because I think in life, when you care about what you're doing and when you genuinely care about people and um, yeah, you just have to take your emotion out of it and you have to just show up, right? Because especially if someone pays and they've invested in it, it doesn't matter how you feel, right? And I think that's really what the core of discipline actually is, is doing the thing no matter how you feel right? Whether that's going to the gym or showing up on a call or being there for someone, it doesn't matter, right? If you just live constantly based on how you feel all the time, you're never going to get anything done and you're never going to get to where you want to be. Um, but I guess the last thing kind of on that note is I don't think balance really exists in life. That's kind of another thing I've really learned is there are seasons um, and some seasons are going to be, you are massively grinding. Um, and then maybe you have some seasons where you rest. And I think that's a way better way to look at your life. Um, Hermosi's is just to go back to him a bunch because he's really just, um, yeah, he's helped me a lot in addition to a lot of other, other entrepreneurs. But um, you, uh, yeah, he says like, you know, there's so many gurus and stuff who like, oh, you got to have this whole morning routine. But he says like, yo, the work just needs doing. And so if you can just get up and go right to work, then like, cool. Like, do you need to do some crazy routine? And even lately for me, it's like, I've been on a super late schedule, but I'm still working until sometimes three in the morning. And so that works for me right now. It's like, I'm still getting the work done. And so at the end of the day, regardless of like, even setting your business up, the perfect LOC and all these different things, it's like, you just need to get up and you need to do the work. The work just needs to get done. And the magic that you're looking for, which is, um, uh, the Chris Williamson, uh, quote, um, I can't remember if it was him or someone else, but yeah, it might even been him quoting Hermosi or someone else, or maybe it's Goggins. Um, anyways, the magic is found in the work that you're avoiding. Um, and so, yeah, the amount of hours and time that I've put into to what I'm doing now um, is so much. And I wouldn't take uh, any of those moments back, but there is a lot of moments where I think not a lot of people are built for this. Um, but having ownership of myself, having solidarity and what I get to do with my life, um, I will never give up um, for anything. Um, and I would rather live in a cardboard box on the side of the road than ever work a job for anyone else ever again in my life. Um, and The biggest thing I think on that note, and this is even why I was initially wanting to start the business and a part of why I got so disenfranchised from the music industry is because in 2021, I really had my actual born again, come to Jesus moment. 
know, I've been a Christian my whole life. I like to do air quotes Christian, but um, I didn't really have that born again moment until the end of 2021. And, um, you know, that next year, um, I spoke out about some things that I felt were something I wanted to talk about. One was, um, Matt Walsh had a documentary called what is a woman. And there was a, a scene in there about, um, you know, sex changes and stuff like that being pushed to little kids. And so I reposted some of that stuff and I felt like that really is a seriously evil thing. And that's where I stand on my morals. And, and as a man, as a person in this world, you should be able to speak up for what you believe, right? I personally believe that we shouldn't be telling kids certain things, right? Before they've actually had a chance to reach adolescence and understand who they are as a person. Uh, and so had people try to come at me, try to cancel me, things uh, with labels and, and relationships um, kind of went up in, in smoke a little bit there. And then, um, you know, something else that year where uh, Roe v. Wade was overturned. Um, and so um, I had a friend at the time who told me that his mother was raped and she decided to keep him. And so I made a post about, hey, you know, his life actually has value to it, even though this terrible thing happened, right? And most people, and you know, I, I can't imagine what that would be like as a woman, but the fact is, is regardless of the situation, the life has value. And that's the point I was trying to make, okay? And so that was like the kind of last um, strike in a lot of people in my life. And during those moments, I realized that if I want to be a leader in this world and I want to stand up for the things that I personally believe, and I want to, as a Christian kingdom-minded person, if I want to build God's kingdom, and stand up for what is right and shine the light that is God and the Holy Spirit and Christ inside of me, that is going to mean being offensive. And it's going to be, uh, it's going to mean being controversial to a lot of people, right? Because the, 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 who Christ was just in general, even when he was walking around preaching, it was controversial. And it was especially controversial to the, the, um, um, can't think of their names. The priests back then, right? Um, you know, the religious leaders. And so if you are going to be a strong person that's going to stand up for, for Christ and what is in the Bible, you're going to offend people, right? If there's any Christians listening to it, it's like the only thing that's promised in life as a Christian, really besides heaven, is you're going to be persecuted. Um, and, and I think this even gets even deeper, even just to even being an artist or anything, it's like people are not going to like you. If you are different or you stand up for anything, people are not going to like you. The sign that you're actually doing something right in a big way and it, for the most part is there's people who don't like you. Um, so I say all that to say that while those things were happening and I was thinking about my life and what was going on with me and how I was transforming as a person, um, you know, I had all these labels and people who were, you know, above me or, or in charge, not in, in charge necessarily, but they had, um, they had stake in me as an artist and, and as a person. And I will say that during that time, I didn't really care what the consequences would be in terms of how it would affect the people around me. Um, and though I do not regret any of those moments, uh, it did make me have a lot of caution in terms of collaborating with people like as an artist or as a business owner, like, Hey, if you don't agree, um, and you are not only equally yoked with someone you want to marry, but equally yoked with, um, people in your life who you're working with, whether that's a collaboration on art or business or whatever, if you don't agree at a super core foundational level and something comes up like that, it's a problem, right? And it's not a problem until it is, right? And so this was a moment for me where it was a problem. Um, but that was a huge moment leading up to why I, I wanted to quit music was just being in that industry and being in, um, you know, in this industry with labels and people around me that were anything but trying to be godly and trying to be uh, righteous with their life. Um, and so 
that was really the first super moment of like, dude, I have to be independent. There's no choice other than to be independent. Um, and then why I ended up to burn out was, you know, just giving my vocal and my creativity to all these DJs and not being able to focus on my own original music. Um, but the point of walking through everything I just walked through is to get back to the point of being an independent person. And the only way that you can truly be an independent person is you have to have your own company where there is no one above you, where it is you. You are in control. You make your schedule, you build your life, and you do the things you need to do to, to move your life, your business, your mission forward. And the only way that you can do that and remain independent as a person, especially if you're someone who is kingdom-minded, who is a Christian like myself, in my opinion, you cannot do that fully unless you have your own business, whatever that is. Um, so I think that is kind of all the points, at least that are on my mind right now in terms of what I've learned from the business side of things. Uh, I'll just end by saying, yeah, I am so incredibly blessed and grateful to be where I am right now. Um, I'm so grateful for all the incredible people that have supported me that God has sent into my life um, to help me. Um, you know who you are if you're watching this video without naming every single person. Um, and I will continue to do my very, very best um, to take this company and the vision I have for changing this world in the music industry uh, and helping artists as far as humanly possible. And I will continue to give glory to God and I will continue to try to be my best and show up for every single person that not only works with me now, um, but the artists who are, are in the group and, and for every single artist uh, that ever gives me a chance to help them. Uh, and that is my commitment. That is my word. And, and I'm not perfect. And I'm sure there'll be times that I will mess up. Um, but for as much as I can do, I will try my best. Um, yeah. So. Um, now to kind of talk about the things that I have learned, uh, from talking to so many artists over the past year. Um, hold up. I am not cutting this video, so, um, this is a water break. Okay. So after talking to over, I didn't really do the math, honestly, but I really feel like it's about 200 people that I probably talked to um, since about a year. And so let's just say it's 200. I like that number. It's easier. So after talking to about 200 artists, either that I've worked with or on calls uh, or just in general, here's what I see. I see one, that most artists are delusional. And that's not really all bad. It's kind of funny when you think about that. So I think to actually do incredible work as an artist, you do have to be delusional. You do have to be a little crazy, I guess you could say. Um, you have to have some kind of grandiose, weird vision that, you know, most people aren't going to relate to. Um, and I think the best art comes out of that. Um, but on the other side of kind of the negative part of being delusional is yeah, you know, I just I just talked about this the other day on another podcast with a friend and I just posted this clip about you have to get to a point where you take 100% responsibility for your life 
Uh, but I say that as a preface for also saying that this isn't necessarily 100% all artists' fault. And so the reason why I can say that is because I have to remember not only as a person, but definitely as a coach and an educator and as a mentor that you don't know what you don't know. And I say that as a preface for saying so many artists like myself come from an era where it was, I have to get signed to a record label. Like that is it. That is the only option that I have is to get signed to a record deal. And that, really was it. That is really the only option that everyone had. And there's so many videos that I've seen lately where, um, you know, there's, I think it was, uh, the dude from, um, Oasis talking about how, you know, uh, the world didn't want the Beatles, but they got him. They didn't want Jimi Hendrix, but they got him. And I understand that. I understand that people got scouted and then the label system, the radio system got behind them. And that's how we have the, uh, the legacy artists that we have today. Um, but the truth is that there may have been so many other incredibly talented people out in the world that because they were just in a different situation, there was no other way for them to be discovered. Like that was it. It's either they got discovered by a label or someone at radio, uh, that's it. And if they didn't, like they're just in obscurity and we will never know their name, right? And so um, it's really, really important to remember that. You had to not only just get discovered uh, and be in the right place at the right time and, and be talented, but you had to get permission from, from a lot of people. The, the Someone to record you, the radio station, the label to get behind you. Um, and so, you know, it's so nice to think like, man, I wish the music industry would just be back there, right? But the truth is, is if we were back there, way less artists would have opportunities than they do now. And so that as the perspective to kind of go into what I'm saying, which is this delusional part, that's part of it. I think it's like a lot of artists are like, yo, I wish we could just go back into the old days where like you didn't have to, to do anything. You just had to like focus on music and then like, you know, this whole team of people would just come around you and like all your job was to just make music and record music and play music live, right? But the delusion is believing that any part of that is still real today. It's really not. Um, and so... I think the first real part of the delusional thing is, is thinking that the industry is still that. And it is looking at even artists that blew up 10 years ago and thinking like, oh dude, if I just get signed to the same labels or I just like do collabs or do remixes or, or whatever the typical stuff that they've seen for the last 10 years, then like I'll just eventually just blow up. It'll just happen. Um, and it's not going to, right? Technology since the 2000s and probably even before then, it's exponentially getting more powerful. Like the, the progress that we're making in technology from just like the pat, like 10 years to, to five years to one year to two years to, or one year to months to weeks there are jumps and strides that are happening in a year now that it used to take 20, 50, 200 years to get to. And so I say that to say, in terms of where we are with social media and the internet, every single day that we move into the future, the algorithms, the social media, the internet is getting more integrated and more just it's every single thing of our life and it's getting more interwoven into it like as the days go on. And when you think about just your normal life and how you engage with the world, <laughs> besides your normal just day-to-day -day life, right? Your job or whatever you do, like just think about what you do on your phone. Like if you're just a regular person, just think about what you do. 
right? You're listening to music, maybe you're listening on Spotify, but if you're not listening to music or watching Netflix or watching YouTube, you're on Instagram or you're on TikTok or you're on Twitter. And so if you just get out of being delusional and, and just thinking you live in this fantasy world of, of the old way that things are and you just look at things for what they are and where you discover new music or where you find interest in certain things, it is on your phone. It is on social media. It's on YouTube. And so if you just look logically about where the world is, how can you deny that that is not the most important thing that you have to figure out? And so really the first delusion is <laughs> thinking that the old industry is how it is or how it should be or whatever. Um, and so, yeah, kind of really the first point on that is, is artists are still having to, to learn and figure out, I guess, and just like rip the scales off their eyes that like, they're going to have to figure out how to make content. Um, so that's the first thing. And really like my entire business is pretty much based on that concept of like, Hey, I know you need help with this, right? I know that, you know, hopefully now that it's an issue, right? And so the biggest thing that I help all these artists with is, okay, let's actually try to learn to like this process. Let's, let's learn to have this be a 360 thing that, that is a part of who you are. Like the content is a part of your art. And so you can create that thing that gets the music to who you want to hear. It, and so you can do all this stuff, right? This is kind of as simply as I can put it. Um, so that's the first thing I see all the time. Um, I would say the second thing is most artists' goals and dreams and aspirations do not match what they're actually willing to do to get there, right? It's like someone's like, I want to be a bodybuilder, right? And they just like sit on the couch and just like watch uh, bodybuilding videos of Arnold and just hoping that like, you know, their muscles by just watching and like thinking about it will, you know, and then just someone will come in and be like, you won, right? Without doing any work. And, and that's really a crazy metaphor to even say, but like that's almost what these artists think of um, this like success that they feel like is going to come without actually doing the actual work it actually takes, right? And so that work that it actually takes is not just making good music, um, because yeah, just as a preface for everything that I'm talking about now on the music side, I want to just assume that we're talking to artists or you're watching this right now and you're an artist that already makes good music, right? Maybe you've been signed to labels. Maybe you've been, played some good shows. Maybe you've, you've done some stuff. Maybe you even have, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of streams on Spotify, right? But we're talking to artists who have all that stuff, but are still working a job in their bedroom, making music, struggling right? Still figuring out, still trying to figure out how, like, why is my music career not where I want it to be? And that's where I was. And that's where so many artists are. And so the, that problem is they're not willing to do what it actually takes to be successful, right? And so it's a couple things, right? It's first off the content thing. It's everything. It's, it's, it's the most important thing other than music is how can I make authentic, cool content to translate this music to other people? Uh, and the second thing is actually realizing it's a business. And if you run a business like I do, there's an infinite amount of things that I do in terms of trying to run the business from ads to content, to talking to people, to the sales, the marketing, to networking, to literally every single thing on the back end of, of systems and so many things. And then what we talked about at the beginning of, of the business stuff is spending money to run the business. Like it costs money to make money. And the reason this is such an issue, and obviously this is very personal to the business I run because I run an education company, which costs money to work with me. Uh, and it is not cheap because it is premium and we offer an insane amount of value to, to, to the artists of what we do. Um, but just as the price is set up in terms of coaching to get quality, that price is also set up because if you're not invested enough in something, you are not going to take the action. Or if you're not 
willing to pay enough for um, an ad or marketing or something, it's not going to have the same impact. It's like, it's the same. Whether you're actually physically paying to market yourself or you're paying for someone to support you or coach you, if you don't invest enough into that thing, it's never going to have the fuel to, to get you to where you want to be. Uh, and, and, and so I would say really that first problem is when money comes up, when artists think about spending money on things, I think a lot of artists are more than willing to spend thousands of dollars on gear and plug-in and DJ controllers and all these things. When at the end of the day, yeah, cool. You're going to have more tools, but the truth is, is there are kids on their laptop who, who have FL studio have like the cracked version of Ableton who are going to make a banger and they cracked it for free and they're using all the stock plugins. Right. I've had so many times in my life where I've seen people just like think that it's the gear that's going to make the good music and it doesn't. Right. And so maybe this kind of even goes or kind of staying in the delusional realm right now with this is artists aren't willing to spend money on the things that can actually help them. But I also think there isn't always the best option out there. And that's why I feel like the company that I run, it's very, very unique. There is no other company out there who is run from an artist perspective and who is trying to nurture these guys to teach them this thing so that they learn to enjoy the process, right? Everyone out there is saying like, hey, you just got to make content, right? No one's going like, hey, let's get to know you and, and give you the best advice on how to do that based on who you are. Right. And so I kind of have to, to teach and, and tell people this and tell them that it's different even when I talk to them. Right. So I think there's one that the actual support that they need isn't, isn't apparent to them. Maybe that's part of it too. But I really think the, the broader point, which what we're talking about is they're not actually willing to invest in it the same way someone who runs an actual business is willing to invest into their business. Yeah. Um, it's really interesting as I continue to think about the problems that I see with artists and I just keep coming back to this delusion, honestly, which is really crazy to kind of keep saying, and I'm not trying to shame any artists out there. I am an artist. I was in the same place, um, trying to, to help you guys out of this. Um, but yeah, it's really just the artists who think that if they make good music, if they just focus on the music, if they spend all their time on the music, that it will get them to where they want to be. And it doesn't. It's so rare. It, they're thinking that like there's going to be this lucky break that happens. Like I'll just make a banger that I'll work months on and I'll, I'll post it once and I'll say out now and just somehow the algorithm, the Spotify, Spotify gods will, will just pick it up and they'll put it on the editorial playlist. And then like, just, I'll just have a manager and then the manager will just get a content team and like everything will come, come for me. I'm so good. And I guess that leads me to the next point now that I said that. I think the other problem is ego, right? Because first I see some artists who are either have a friend of a friend, right? So they make good, good enough music to have the friend go, yo, I'm gonna help you out. So they get hooked up, right? So I've seen that happen a lot. And I've seen artists get big things that happen to them um, and then I've seen them have this ego. I've seen them have this rock star ego when they didn't do really any work to deserve that other than, uh, yeah, make good music. It's like, dude, everyone makes good music nowadays. Like there's so, and I don't mean everyone, but like, there's so many people who make good music. Like that's, that's like step one. And that's why I said that as a preface for this conversation is let's just assume the artists who are talking about out there, you already made good music. Um, so there's this ego from getting all these kind of vanity things or, or even, you know, getting validation from time to time. And what that does to all the artists that I'm thinking about right now is it stops them from focusing on building a fan base and doing the content because they're in the same delusion from these things that are kind of blowing up their ego 
that seem like, oh, I'm big, right? But when we look at their their fan base, we look at their social medias, it's like they don't have one. And if they try to book a show by themselves, they would have a tough time bringing 50 people, right? So maybe we'll end here because I think this is a great point to end on. Most artists who are struggling, I think the most is because they just have this ego of like, I don't need help, right? I'm good. Like I'm, I'm a rock star. Like all these opportunities and things are going to come to me, right? And then they're going to get 10, five, 10 years down the road and they're going to go, man, like what happened? Um, and then I guess maybe a couple other things are, um, now that I have a community built and I see the power of like, not only the value that I offer as an educator and my experience in the industry, but the value of just like we said with me paying to get in the rooms with other people, the value of being in an intentional paid community of other people who are serious. Like I'm seeing that inside of my group where there have been collabs and, and, and friendships and things that are created. And I think the biggest thing is having that support because there's so many artists out there who are just alone in their room. And that gets really, really lonely at some point. And I think it's a big reason why most people give up, right? They're like, I don't have a community. I don't have friends. And I think people have friends in the scene, but how many people have things in their life where like it's intentional? right? Hey, we're getting together every week. We're talking about stuff that's going to help each other. We're like listening to a song. We're listening to each other's songs. We're giving each other feedback. We're talking about life. You know, it's the same reason why, you know, like I go to church, right? Or you have fellowships, you have Bible studies. It's like, that's how you hold each other accountable. That's how you pour into each other. And so as a community of, of any kind of, of person, whatever you're in, if you don't have a community, that's like a consistent thing. It is so hard out there. It's so hard by yourself. Um, and so maybe that's just another thing that most people don't understand that they really, really need is that community. You need to have a community of other people who are just as motivated and invested as you are, right? And it needs to be intentional. And I think that's the key word to some of this stuff that is, is communal and, and these kind of group, um, you know, community type things. It's like, it's intentional. Like, hey, we're meeting here and we're doing this right? We're talking about this, right? We're not just hanging out, right? And I think hanging out's great, but um, I think life needs to be more intentional, especially when you are focused on something that you're super passionate about. You need to intentionally put yourself with other people who are intentionally trying to do things to improve their life. Um, I know there's probably a ton of other things that I've learned since talking to um, artists this year, uh, but I say all this to say, um, I have so much love and compassion, um, and just genuine care for every single person out there who has the creative fire or energy to create something and try to make it into a career. Like, I love you guys so much out there, whoever's listening to this right now. And I want nothing more for you than to, to have what you, you see and feel in your heart happen. And, and that's why with all the content and all this stuff, it's like, that is the vessel. And so I just want more than anything, people to just understand that. And I want to help people figure it out because I know that if you make good music and you have uh, an authentic, genuine thing about you that you feel needs to get out there, if you can figure this other stuff out and you can have the right support and, and you can skip time and, and, and get the right information and be around other people, I know you can get there. And that is why I'm here doing this that's why I'm here making this video. That's why I wake up every day and I'm in front of my computer, either talking to artists or working with the people on my team or in my group. Like I'm so passionate about it because seeing the transformations of working with people and seeing what this is doing um, is beyond fulfilling. It is my life's mission and purpose. And I'm, I'm so incredibly blessed to be a part of anyone's progress in life. And that is what will keep me going. And that is what um, fuels the fire of, of everything that this is. Um, and I will end here and finally say, I am so grateful to God, my relationship with God, being obedient to what I truly know, realizing that our heavenly father sent his son to die for my sins. Cause none of us are perfect. 
right? And, and, and realizing who Christ was and what's actually in the Bible. And the only reason my life is what it is is because I've done my absolute best to, to continue to ask for guidance and wisdom from God to try to live by who he is and his word and, and, and be my best through that. And, and so I really give all the glory to him because I would not be here talking to you guys right now, saying the things I am, if it wasn't for his, his impact in my life. And I kind of get emotional when I think about this because I, I understand what I had to go through in my life to get here. And I feel like, cause my father was never there for me. He was the father that I always had and always needed. And he allowed me and, and molded me through every single thing that happened to me in my life so that I could become the person who I am today. Yeah. So, um, thank you so much for watching this. Um, I'm actually about to leave for a two week trip to Italy with my mom. Um, no coincidence that we are leaving on the trip tomorrow, which is today, September 11th. Um, a year since I quit my job. Uh, my mom has been my number one supporter my entire life. Um, mom, I love you so much if you watch this. And um, I cannot wait to to be with you in Italy where we've talked about going for a very long time. Um, and I'm going to try to be present. I'm probably still going to do some work, uh, but this is going to be a very, very cool trip. It's my first time overseas. Um, I've been absolutely grinding today, just getting everything set up for this trip. And very blessed that I have an incredible team that's going to be helping with things when I'm gone. Um, but I'm going to continue to make videos like this. YouTube is something I'm going to put way more focus on coming up. And, um, yeah, I want to really build, um, not only the Zach Gray channel, but the sustainable creative channel and just have so much content and information that can just be helpful to any person who's creative at all, who wants to turn their life into, a full-time career, whatever that is. Uh, and so without further ado, um, I love you so much. Whoever you are watching this, God bless. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, night, week, wherever you are in the world. Uh, and I'll talk to you soon.